in the name of the one holy and undivided Trinity. Amen. Well, here we are, this first Sunday in Lent, that time where I like to say Christians go into spring training. Yes, Lent is a time where we focus our attention on Christ's journey towards suffering and death. And yes, it is a time where we are more intentional about the confessing of our sins. But the purpose of Lent, the one purpose of Lent, is to deepen our intimacy with God. That's what it's for. And so all of these practices, Lenten practices, whether it's giving something up for Lent, or taking something on, fasting or abstaining from some kinds of food, or uh, engaging in extra charitable works, or reading a spiritual book, prayer, all of these things that we do are merely tools to help us nurture our relationship with each other and with God. Now, the older I get, I say, the more and more I look forward to Lent. I used to dread it. But um, I have to be honest, I have never been so excited about the start of Lent as I have been this year. And I know why it is. It's because of this ridiculous, zany Lent madness thing. <laughs> I've, been, I've been counting the days down like Advent to Christmas. It was like, oh, it's here. Um, and which I've shared with many of you that I, when I first heard about Lent Madness, I thought I was just totally inappropriate. I've never heard anything so outrageous as voting on which saint is better. It's not a competition. Well, and then I started going to people's homes and seeing the bracket. Like, we have the bracket back there on the bulletin board. Um, and, and then getting all excited about, well, I certainly thought that St. Swift should have beat out Molly Brandt. And I'm like, you know who these people are. <laughs> um, so I'm very excited about this way and it, it, to deepen our intimacy with God. And as you heard, it's going to be our programs on Wednesday night. We're going to plug into that. Um, but you know that that gospel we heard uh, is always, we hear one version of the story of Jesus' temptation on the first Sunday of Lent, always. And you may be expecting me to preach on temptation today. You'll have to wait. Uh, that's another sermon. Because we often forget the last sentence of that statement, of that gospel. Jesus left the wilderness and went into Galilee and preached the good news that the realm of God was at hand and called people to turn their lives around. That's what repent means. Um, and that is essentially what the lives of the saints are all about is these amazing people throughout the last 2,000 years that have uh, shared the good news of God and have called us to turn our lives around. Were they perfect? No. And you'll learn a lot about their imperfections during this Lent madness, let me tell you. Um, but they, they give us this uh, an example of how to do that. And I can't help also to think of that first reading of the wonderful story of, of God's promise to Noah through the rainbow, this single entity of light that casts so many brilliant and distinct colors. There again, that's what we're talking about in the lives of the saints. One single light in so many different colors. Now, we're going to be talking about all kinds of saints during this Lenten tide, but I want to I want to get test the waters, get the lay of the land. Who are some of your favorite saints right now? Who's got a favorite saint? Saint Francis. Saint Francis of Assisi. What's one reason you like him? Because he incorporated his love of creation into his love of the Lord. Absolutely, love all of creation. Whether, no matter how many legs you had, no matter what kind of skin or fur you had, right? You have. Bridget. Tell us why you like Bridget. Um, a lot of reasons. She was gutsy. And um, she was inclusive. She found uh, apps that had men and women together. And they worshipped together. And she's Irish. Uh, there you go. 
Let's say they're not raising. Right, Patrick O'Callaghan? Um, yes, she along with, with Patrick and Kevin were the great Celtic Irish saints. I saw some other hands. Carol. Saint Thomas. Saint Thomas. The one that was human. <laughs> I, no, I truly don't know. There, there are many St. Thomases. What do you like about St. Thomas? And I'll tell you which one. He denied, but he was human. Yes, he, uh, the apostle. So the other reason I asked us today, like Thomas of Becket was somebody's favorite. Yes. Yes. Um, yes, Thomas needed proof, but then he was the first one to shout out, my Lord and my God. Oh, behind me, Mickey. St. Adelaide, she's the patron of prisoners and second wives, and uh, those are the two. And uh, I know you have a, a, a connection with the prison woman because you work in the prison, right? And I didn't know about Adelaide. I, can, I consider her the patron saint of Coffee Creek. Me. Me. <laughs> Lucinda. To the extent that I know, so I'm sticking my neck out. St. Augustine. St. Augustine of, of Hippo, the 4th century bishop. What, what's one reason you like him? If I've got it right. <laughs> I just found him incredibly wise, and the thinkings and statements that, at least that I've heard and read, are classic. They hold true for all time. Right. Uh, Augustine, you know, Augustine gets a bad rap today because, you know, he came up with the doctrine of original sin. Mainly, if you know about his life, um, it's understandable. He, let's just say he sowed his wild oats as a young man. And, um, but uh, he's, his uh, autobiography, his, his, his uh, City of God, all those things, deep theological understanding there, right? Others? I don't know, can you, can you shout more? Thank you. Why? Thanks for saying of lost causes, your hopeless causes. Yes. up against Cuthbert, so I have to make Brenda. Monica, because she kept on praying for her son, and in the end it all turned out all right. Except I was thinking of that when, when you said, Marianne, um, Monica was the mother of Augustine, um, and all during his wild days she was praying incessantly. I don't know if she mentioned St. Jude, but uh, she was praying. I didn't get a look at the choir. Any hands back there? Oh, I'm sorry. Forget about you guys back there. <laughs> saint Cecilia. She's a patron saint of music. Exactly. I thought. No, no question why you like her. And she's, yes, she's on the brackets these time, this time. One of my favorites is already lost around. Uh, Saint Teresa, uh, in, in Spanish they say Saint Teresa de Jesus, they never mention where she was born. We call her Teresa of Avila, uh, great doctor of the church, uh, who had a, uh, was a counter-reformation mystic um, and a wonderfully wicked sense of humor. She was very, very devout, very, very pious, but once when her cart was mired in the mud and she was trying to get to one of her convents, she said, she was praying to God and she said, Dear Lord, no wonder you have so few friends seeing how you treat them. <laughs> so all of these wonderful lives. Um, this Wednesday, we're going to have portrayed to us um, Archbishop William Laud, uh, who was uh, the royalist Archbishop of Canterbury against the Puritans, um, but who, you know, he wasn't much better in his treatment of the Puritans 
than they were to others. So he's a really sort of questionable character, but a reminder of the humanness that, that all of these people were full-rounded people, that he left to us a great legacy of the Catholic faith that he fought for. Uh, he's up against Kamehameha the Fourth, a king of Hawaii, um, who brought the Anglican Church to, um, to Hawaii, made it the religion of his people, and devoted himself to the care of his people. We're going to hear about uh, a New Testament laywoman, leader in the church, Dorcas, who in Acts, we, we mainly hear about her after her death. She wove all these beautiful garments. And we're also going to hear about Frederick Douglass, who you probably never thought about as a saint. Maybe just 19th century... Um, Abolition. I can't really say prohibitions. That's another issue. Abolitionist. <laughs> Abolitionist. But um, he had a deep, deep, deep Christian faith that impelled him to do the things he did. And then we're going to hear about uh, Bridget and uh, the mother of our patron, Elizabeth, mother of St. John the Baptist, who's such a mentor for Mary in her pregnancy. So this great company of saints um, are very much like that rainbow we heard about, that, that single light that points our vision to the holy, and yet which is so varied and so brilliant with distinct hues and colors. And those colors, unlike Lent Madness, are not in competition. They are all leading us to one thing, intimacy with God. So this Lent, even if you don't come to the Wednesday night uh, programs, or even if you're not participating in Lent Madness online, <laughs> lentmadness.org, um, I hope that we'll all use this season as an opportunity to look into the lives of others, to see their true colors, and how they uh, share that good news that the realm of God is at hand how they live that out in their own specific hues so that we might be more aware and appreciative of the light that shines in us. And it may seem different than everybody else's, but so did theirs. And it may seem a little tarnished in places, but so are theirs. And let us rejoice together as a community of faith, seeing that light in each other, and in ourselves, and then letting our light so shine before others, that they may see the good we do, and give glory to our God in heaven.